Visit AwakeningMusicBooks.com for avant-garde artists, eclectic world music, consciousness raising radio and blogs, self-help healing and wellness services. That's AwakeningMusicBooks.com. But our topic today is essential oils. Ooh. Yeah. How <laughs> it smells you, good in it here. smells good in here. <laughs> what are we smelling? Uh, lemongrass and island mint. Oh my gosh, I, I love it. It smells so good, good in here. Lemongrass and island mint. So we're going to be talking about essential oils, how to use them for good health. We have a very special guest with us today, Al Garcia. And Al Garcia, you know, he is not in the studio with us. He is, I don't know where he is. Where is Al? Utah. Utah. He's in Utah. <laughs> I think. <laughs> okay. We have him here on Zoom though. So hey Al. <laughs> He's on Zoom with us so we can see him. And we're going to be discussing the medicinal and therapeutic health benefits of essential oils. Now Al is an expert in essential oils and aromatherapy. Um, who conducts training sessions in all 50 states. Now, he is the founder of Herbs for Health. That's a re um, retail store is nationwide, and he is the guru on alternative health products and an expert on the use of natural herbs, organic minerals, enzymes, amino acids, and friendly bacteria. So, Al, my first question to you is, why should the listeners be paying attention to this topic? Why is it important? Well, you know, one of the biggest reasons that I think is important is that because Yesterday, I heard on the radio here in Utah that Medicaid was being challenged by uh, not being able to pay for pharmaceutical medications to a lot of Medicaid recipients. Oh, and so boy. I hope that what you realize is that uh, the creator made natural means of, of having uh, natural remedies that have medicinal actions in these mm -hmm. plants. And it would be very wise of you to learn how to have a backup source mm. so that you're not without uh, some relief in your health challenges. That's the biggest reason you want to listen to me. Okay. Mm. Perfect. Wow. Yeah, I love it. And that, you're dropping some information right now. And listeners always like to remind you to take notes during the show because <laughs> we're going to be giving some important information. Like you want to write down the phone number one time again is 602 Three two four fifteen ten. So, Al, my next question to you is: Before we jump into the topic, we're going to go to break in a little bit. But please answer quickly for us: Why should we be listening to you about this topic? You told us why the topic's important, but why you? Well, let me just say this: uh, In 1988, I started consulting people on a daily basis in a wellness center, my own Herbs for Health stores, and I am an herbalist uh, by trade, so I've spent 30 years studying herbs. But uh, I had a tragic accident and fractured both of my shoulders mm. in uh, 2009. And so I didn't get addicted to morphine, Lorcabs, and Percocet. Uh, one of my kind friends showed me how to use essential oils for some of these very, very strong pain problems so that I didn't get addicted. And uh, I learned to use them and help for sleep, for pain, for relaxing, for Love stress it. relief. So that's why you want to listen to me. Yeah, personal yeah. experience is always the best Absolutely, experience. absolutely. Yes. Well, I am relatively new to the uh, essential oil world. It's been about a month and a half, maybe maybe two months now, and I'm so excited to learn about how to use these oils that I have um, for all things. So we're going to go to break in just a moment. Al, thank you so much for being here. Listeners, you're listening to the Healthy Grocer Radio Show. I'm Kenyatta, your host. I'm here with Stephanie Stanley, and Hello. we have, hey, we've got Al Garcia, and we're going to be right back talking about essential oils how to use them for good health. We already have a caller. Yes, we do. Yes, I'm so excited. I believe we have Ann from Mesa. Ann, are you there? I am. Yes, oh, welcome. Hi. Welcome to the show. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I love essential oil, mm. um, but I don't know how to I don't know how to use them. Ah, well, see, I'm, I'm so glad you're listening to the show. You're in the right place at the right time. And <laughs> so, you know, Al mentioned he's going to be giving away some things. But they told me uh, when they put you on the line that you have a question for us, Anne. What's the question? Well, I do. I do. I don't know which oils to use for possibly for, let's say, an anti-inflammatory purposes mm. or for, let's say, for colds or that kind of thing. So, again, I don't really know the right purposes for the oils. Okay. Great but I'd like to question. use them more. Well, we mm -hmm. will defer to Thanks. Al for yes. the answer. Many <laughs> so, selections, too. So, yeah, so hang tight. Uh, take hang tight. Um, Thank you. Ann? And you realize that all of the the common denominator to all health challenges is inflammation, right? Mm -hmm. So if you learn I, the solution mm -hmm. to inflammation, you are really miles ahead. And lavender is one of my very 
first mm. and famous and simple and most inexpensive oils to use uh, as an anti-inflammatory. Now, how do you use it? What do you do with it? <laughs> that was going to be my <laughs> question. <laughs> there are three ways that you can use them. You can use them aromatically, which would be that you buy one of these small diffusers and put a couple drops in the water part of that diffuser. Mm -hmm. They call those right. ultrasonic right. diffusers. And it just puts a, a small volatile oil in the air, and, uh, and that helps you. Uh, because everything that you breathe is going into your body, okay. and uh, that's one way. Then you can use it topically, which would be you add a couple, three drops of this lavender oil to your favorite carrier oil, such as a fractionated coconut oil or an mm -hmm. almond oil, mm -hmm. something you like to rub on your skin. Okay. And then whatever goes on you goes in you, that's mm -hmm. topically. Mm -hmm. And the last way is that you, if you're using a top-grade therapeutic grade essential oil then you could put a drop or two in water and drink it mm -hmm. and so really? that's the three ways you can use them as long as they're pure and not synthetically developed mm -hmm. um, most of the products that are synthetically developed will stay on the bottle not fit for human consumption mm -hmm. or not for oh. internal consumption but but companies that makes pure oils that are uh, pure grade or food grade they'll say that they can be used internally right in their literature. Mm -hmm. I'm taking now, notes. what about <laughs> lemon? Um, what am I trying to say? Um, I, it smells lemon. so good. Lemon. Oh, yeah. Lemon, pure lemon oil. All of the citruses like wild orange, grapefruit, lime, lemon. Uh, these are, are excellent oils to use as a, as a drop of oil in, in warm water to, like, make a tea mm -hmm. or That's even right. ice mm -hmm. cold water. Uh, you can do either one. I mean, think about when you drop a tea bag in a hot cup of tea, uh, let's say a peppermint tea, it uh, only takes one drop of uh, peppermint oil to equate to many, many bags of peppermint tea. So it's a concentrate hmm. already just in one drop of essential oil. This is Now, what so about great. that Lang Lang? Let you, um, do you use that for any specific purpose? Yeah, Lang Lang can be used for hormonal. Uh, it can be used to help you if you're having any kind of uh, female issues. It's a really wonderful thing for, for helping in that arena. This is so great. I'm so glad that you called in, Ann, because you just asked so many great questions <laughs> yeah, that I think answered oils. questions that people weren't even thinking to ask. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right away. And well, I buy them, and topic. I don't know what to do with them. No, so. I, I love it. And well, so we have your contact information, and we so appreciate you calling in, and we're going to continue with the conversation. Make sure you're taking notes, and thank you for calling in to the Healthy Grocer Radio Show. We're excited. We've okay. got your contact information, and Al will be sending you your those, book. uh, I think the, the booklet, yeah. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you thanks, for calling Anne. in. Thank Anne. you for your great questions. Uh -huh. Take okay, care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. How fun with callers. Uh, well, hey, yeah, someone followed yeah, some instructions, exactly. and Anne's, Anne's winning big. Now she'll know how to use them. <laughs> now she knows how to use them. <laughs> and I was taking, you know, copious notes as well because I'm like, oh, that's good, that's good. Hey, and you know, if, if, she don't, if we don't get enough callers, I'll send her the book and the oil. Oh, oh. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> After the second <laughs> caller, it's up to... <laughs> By the way, the number is 602-324-1510. Oh, you know, I have to be fair. Okay, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into the conversation, um, and uh, let's get going. What do you got, Stephanie? Okay, let's see. What are essential oils? Why the name even essential oils? What does that mean? Well, you know, way back a long time ago, they used to say that, essential, that oils were the essence of an aromatic herb, the essence, and and when you study essence, you find out that it's kind of the spirit yeah. of, the, of the plant. And when you study the spirit of the plant, you land up finding out that essential oils are natural compounds and volatile liquids or extracts that come from the seeds, the bark, the stems, the leaves, the flowers, the resins of these different uh, herbal plants. And the word essential was derived from that word quintessence. And, it, and so it really boils down to it's the chemistry uh, of the miraculous creation of the medicinal compounds that are in plants. Mm -hmm. That's really what, what it boils down to is the chemistry. Right, right. Speaking of chemistry. So mm -hmm. Go ahead. When, when we study the chemistry of these plants, we find out that the chemistries are antimicrobial, antibiotic, okay. antiviral, antiparasitic. 
uh, analgesic that can take pain away, things like that. Right. And if you ever go into the actual chemistry class of plants and study the chemistry of essential oils, you'll find out that it's things like alcohols and aldehydes and alkanes and alkenes mm -hmm. and carbolic acids mm -hmm. and curcumins and esters and ethers and <laughs> ketones and lactones. There's all kinds of chemistries, and it's, yeah. it's so complex, but yet it's so miraculous that all of these medicinal actions are already in plants. So obviously, you know, somebody yeah. that studied these plants decided to create their own medicines and patent them. Mm. But really, they're here for free. They're here for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that sounds like my area, being a holistic pharmacist, all of those uh, chemical compounds. And I remember we had one class uh, on the aromatic uh, uh, essences, just one. Just one. Yeah, and then when I started to get into essential oils, it brought me back to that class. I'm like, oh, my God, I studied this, but not obviously enough. <laughs> well, they only gave you one one shot. Yeah, <laughs> They're like, this exactly. is all you need to know. <laughs> so, and and most, of uh -huh. the, most of your listeners know that, you know, when they first heard some essential oil names, it was from uh, the Christmas stories of the wise men bringing mm -hmm. to Joseph and Mary frankincense, myrrh, and gold. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of a scripture in Ezekiel 47, 12 that says, the leaf thereof is medicine. Mm. Mm. Isn't that the truth? Absolutely. Yeah. This is self-care. So self-care, right? This is great. So listeners, I just want to remind you, if you're just now tuning in, you're listening to the Healthy Grocer Radio Show. I'm your host, Kenyatta. I'm here with my co-host, Stephanie. And I we're talking here. to Al, Al Garcia about essential oils. How do we use them for good health? Now, we've already had a great conversation. It feels like we're just getting started. We had a guest call in who won um, a booklet. And so if you are listening and wondering, well, how do I get a booklet? Well, you call into the radio show. Real easy. <laughs> Real easy at 602-324-1510 because because Al has some booklets on essential oils. He actually has some actual oils that he will be giving away. And we will be right back after our Kitchen Corner segment with Danielle. Hello and welcome to the Kitchen Corner. I'm your host, Danielle Del Castillo, and I'm here to share some wisdom about building health starting in the kitchen. It's officially fall season and I know people get pumpkin crazy this time of year. And whether you're a pumpkin fan or not, the benefits of eating pumpkin are endless. Pumpkin is high in vitamin A, vitamin C, potassium, fiber, and antioxidants. This nutrient-dense ingredient can be used in many ways, and today we're going to be making some paleo mu pumpkin muffins. So the ingredients you're going to need are one cup of cassava flour, and cassava flour is yucca root, which is delicious for baked goods and using anything that's gluten-free or paleo, and it comes out just like regular flour. And then you're going to need pumpkin pie spice, baking soda, baking powder, salt, canned pumpkin, one egg, maple syrup, olive oil, and water. And that's it. So first you're going to preheat your oven to 400 degrees and get six muffin cups ready. And then in a medium bowl, you're going to whisk together your dry ingredients, which are your cassava flour, one cup, one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, a fourth a teaspoon of baking soda, half teaspoon of baking powder, fourth a teaspoon of salt, and then in another bowl, you're going to whisk together three-fourths a cup of canned pumpkin, one egg, one-fourth a cup of maple syrup, and one-fourth a cup of olive oil, and then three tablespoons of water. Once those are all mixed together, you're going to put in your dry ingredients, combine everything, and then spoon the batter into your muffin cup. And that's it. Put everything in the oven for 18 to 20 minutes until ready, and enjoy. That's it for today's Kitchen Corner. I look forward to sharing more, more recipes with you next week on the kitchen corner let's do it so um he already explained you know uh what are essential oils so how are they effective how can we tell the real ones from the fake ones and uh does quality really cost more well let me just say that um you, this is one of those questions for buyer beware because most of the essential oils uh the the people who manufacture these oils are doing it for different reasons some people do it strictly to put a drop of potpourri on your pine cones in your bathroom. Mm -hmm. Other people are doing it to make uh, candles to light up your living room. And other people do it just to uh, have a good aroma on an incense stick. But when persons are building products for health purposes, they want to make sure they're pure. They're not adulterated with synthetic solvents or alcohols that can poison the product. And so it, you have to be aware of why you're getting the essential oil. If you are doing it for health purposes, 
you really want to find a certified pure therapeutic grade quality that you could ingest. The people that make products that you cannot ingest will put on the box or on the label, not fit for human consumption. Mm -hmm. So look for that on the box. And, and surely you wouldn't put that on your baby's diffuser and put it in their room if it wasn't fit for consumption because anything you diffuse in the mm -hmm. air is going in that child or on your pet. So you want to make sure that you're using pure oils. Now, the uh, mm -hmm. as far as do they cost more, companies that only – it's all about supply and demand. If a company is small and they're building a quality product but they don't have any customers, it's going to cost a lot. But on the other hand, if a company is doing $2 billion and has $10 million customers, they're going to be able to keep the bottle costs and caps and roller bottle costs mm -hmm. down, and they're buying more oil. Therefore, you should be able to get a quality oil very – very reasonably priced, like a, our lemon oil or uh, orange oil is twelve or thirteen dollars retail. Yeah, that's so really reasonable. That's because we buy so much. So those are some examples of of you can buy quality at a reasonable price if you're working with companies that that are doing billions. Love it. The good information. Mm, okay, like that, that buyer that's beware good. announcement. <laughs> right, exactly. And with the cost uh, containments. Okay, so um, you mentioned uh, diffusing uh, these uh, not so good oils in the air. So that means they're being, uh, you know, smelled, right? So that leads into the next question. So why is the olfactory system so important when it comes to essential oils? Well, as you know, we have about 12 body systems, you know, our immune system, endocrine system, respiratory system. But your olfactory system is one of the most important because it has direct delivery to trillions of cells immediately. Right. Uh, I had a person come in one of my stores one day, and they smelled the, the smell and stopped. And I thought maybe they were allergic. And she started mm. tearing up, and big tears ran off her face. And I said, oh, no, she's probably allergic to this oil or this smell. And I said, ma'am, are you okay? And she said, yes. And she kept shopping but crying. <laughs> and and then I said, I'm a little concerned about those tears. And she says, have you ever heard about tears of joy? She said, oh. that cinnamon smell reminded me of my grandfather Aww. making cinnamon rolls for us when we were children. See. And so the olfactory system also has a memory. Right. And it memorizes smells. Stephanie, do you remember your first boyfriend's cologne? <laughs> no. no I don't want to no actually I do I have a bottle still <laughs> yeah. yeah well if you're my age it was Brute or it was Old Spice you know if it's soap on the rope you know how old I am I dated myself <laughs> but anyway smells are very important right. to us and they yeah. they do a lot of, of healing for us they do a lot of memory uh, uh, memorizing and, and, and putting things in our cells that that lasts a long time, you know. Yes, yes, so it, it's important for, for a speedy delivery to get a smell. That's why it's so important to put a drop in your hand mm. and smell that peppermint and deliver. If you want to relax, put teddy right. grain or lavender in your hands and smell it. If you want joy immediately, you put a drop of, lavender, uh, of uh, frankincense with vanilla. Mm. And you'll find joy immediately. Mm. I mean, just it just pow. happens quickly. Yeah, pow. That's, <laughs> pow. That's true. <laughs> right there. It's really powerful. I love that. Let wow. me hop in with a, a question here. Sure, we had go. someone who um, asked, it might have been on, on online, about like commercial air fresheners and things like that that people put out that may have, say that it's an essential oil scent or something like that. Um, what kind of... Unfor go ahead. Unfortunately, today, almost 90% of all air fresheners are synthetically developed. That means a biochemist went into a lab, he took real lemon, real lavender, real uh, fur, copy, and he copy. duplicated the smell <laughs> with ah. chemicals, with chemistry. And so consequently, it becomes a toxin to you to inhale or ingest a synthetically derived uh, spearmint or peppermint. We're having the same problem with toothpaste today. Mm -hmm. We're not using real peppermint nope. spearmint. We're using artificially derived mm. uh, flavors. Uh, we're having the problem in the chewing gum companies today. And so they're not real essential oils. They're they're synthetically derived smells. That's why they call them flavors. Ah, or that's scent. the word to look for. They're not they're flavors not essential oils. They're scents. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. That's excellent. Okay. So mm-hmm. listeners, do you write that down? Paying attention? <laughs> <laughs> buyer, right. buyer beware on, on that. Okay. Well, th- that's fantastic. Thanks for, for clarifying that. And that makes sense. So, all right, cool. What's next, Stephanie? Okay, well, uh, we talked a little bit about precautions and safety. Um, are there any particular oils you like to uh, talk about when it comes to uh, safety and precautions? Well, uh, I want you to remember that we have a whole line of very, very hot, spicy oils like cinnamon, oh, yeah. peppermint, <laughs> thyme, <laughs> oregano. And the thing you want to remember about these oils is that Essential oils are hydrophilic, and that means that, you know, if a car can hydroplane on a rain street and and glide across the water, that means that essential oils are hydrophilic. They also glide across the water. So if you happen to put peppermint in your eye oh God, no. and then you think you can wash it out with water it's you're not gonna in work. trouble oh my goodness because it's gonna hydro it's gonna hydroplane that oil it's gonna, all over all your, over your eye. <laughs> spread it spread so it. what do we it's what do we need to do then? very quickly yes what's so the, the antidote way that you, yeah. the way you do precautions is you use vegetable oil yeah. or uh, a oh. little bit of a, a, a fractionated coconut oil like like a fractionated coconut oil in the okay. bottle and you Put some of that pure oil on a different finger, not the one that <laughs> contaminated your eyeball, on a different finger, <laughs> and you rub it over the same eye, and oh. that oil will dilute right. the peppermint oh, oil okay. and quit burning. And quit right. burning. I've had plenty of those experiences. Oh, my goodness. Oh, absolutely. So those are the kind of things you want to buy or beware. One time I had my wife rub some peppermint. I had a small fever, and I had her rub it on my back. And uh, half an hour later, I went into the shower. And that water hit my back, and the next thing you know, I'm jumping out of the shower as fast as I can run down the hallway. Because you have peppermint everywhere now. Peppermint hydroplane right down my back. (laughs) This is, you know, these are great things to be aware of, and I just want to remind the listeners out there that, you know. Al Garcia is fantastic, and he is giving yeah, away excellent. some giveaways, some booklets, and some essential oils. So all you had to do is call into the radio show at 602-324-1510 uh, to win the giveaway. Like, you win by calling. Like, Raise how easy is that? Digits. Yeah, right? We already have people doing it. You could be one of them. <laughs> and this, okay. is a, this is a 300-page spiral-bound book. It's not a booklet. It's an actual yeah, book, book it with away, some thickness call to it. And it will teach you all about about 200 essential oils. Oh, I'm wow. giving them away free because I got a case too many. <laughs> oh, so, there we go. Can I get And one? then I'm also <laughs> going to give away to those who write in or call in uh, a little intro kit to essential oils so that if you've never used lemon, lavender, and peppermint, you can have some experience. I love it. Lemon, lavender, and peppermint. Mm-hmm. I, love, I love all of those. I've been using them. So... Let's go. What else we got? Okay. Well, let's see here. Um, let me just say one thing with the water and the oil. Um, actually, if you don't have enough of an oil, let's just say mm. the water will spread it. So it kind of extends its uh, longevity. Very it good. does that. So that's another way you can be used. I never thought of that. Mm-hmm. Wait, are you having essential oils right now? Al? I just had a drop of spearmint. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, spearmint's <laughs> nice. I just looked over at Zoom. I'm like, what's he having? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, all right. So he just, you just, you just dropped it right from the bottle into your mouth and then had a little water to help dilute it a little bit or spread it, yep. hydroplane it yep. down that's your throat. Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Good pick me up. Okay. I put a really couple drops in my it's water. A mood lifter. It's a good waker upper on uh, all the citruses. Yes. All the mint. Yes. Peppermint. Experiment, yeah. all those are really good for good, keeping you alert. And Al, I, I'm glad you explained about the hydroplane thing. Let's go back to this water for a second because mm-hmm. I noticed when I put my lemon drops in my water, mm-hmm. it literally just kind of sits, yes, and I does. guess it's just hydroplaning on the top. And I, and I try to, I'm like, why isn't it? You know, mm-hmm. but no, it's not going to mix. Right. It's oil, oil and water, water don't mix. <laughs> okay, is. so and um and I put a little bit of um like clove. What's it called? Like I can't think of the name of it, but it's has like clove and things like that in some water as well. And okay. again, it just sits right on top. Uh-huh. So, and it you know, gets right on the lips when you drink it. So I, I like how he now did for, it just now. For those of you who are using plastic cups and plastic oh, containers, yeah. Oh, yeah. remember that essential oils can quickly um, dissolve cheap plastic, not really good mm-hmm. uh, plastic, but uh, it's good to use glass jars and glass glasses to mix these oils in. 
I one more thing I, I didn't learn for many years. A lot of people know a lot about um, alkalized water. Oh, if wait, you use Al, Al, water, Al, hold that thought, please, because we're going to go okay. to commercial for just a moment. I had to cut you off because I don't want to learn or miss out this important information. Mm -hmm. So thanks for listening to the Natural Grocer Radio Show, everyone. We are talking about essential oils and how they benefit your body. And we're going to be back in just a moment, how to use them for good health. This has been a fantastic, fantastic conversation. So and it still smells good in and here. And it still <laughs> smells good. We've got some important messages. See you in a moment. Okay, I think Al had something he was sharing before. That's right, yeah. Al. You were. You, I cut you off on your, your thought. Oh, life. Oh, oh I, I can't. Was sharing was that, that I learned that if you use alkaline water when you put the drop of oil in essential oils, it will stay cloudy and the oil will mix with alkalized water. But if you're using regular water, it floats. Oh, that's a so good that, way of telling alkalinity. Right? That's huge. These are like knowledge bombs all over oh the place. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, <laughs> listeners, write that down. <laughs> wow. That's a hack. That's a hack right there. <laughs> wow. Guys, I didn't know that. Okay, so uh, let's get back to So the um, essential oils, when it comes to um, maybe some certain health concerns, you mentioned pain um, earlier when we started. So what are some of the major ones that you want to go through? Well, you know, when I had some, uh, I fractured my shoulders in an accident one time, and I, I used the oils like helichrysum, white fur, mm -hmm. black pepper oil, lemongrass oil. These are all analgesics, and they take away pain quickly. Clove oil, I think you all realize that when you go to the dentist to get <laughs> a filling, the very first thing that dentist does is he puts a, a one of those long cotton balls with clove oil and touches your gums before mm -hmm. it gives you a shot. And that's because it numbs you. It's an analgesic, that clove oil. I use that when I have an ingrown toenail or anything like that. And they work excellent. I mean, it's wonderful to, to have the knowledge of analgesic essential oils. Mm, that's good. Yeah, the eugenol oil. Yeah, I remember that. That's what they call it. Okay. Um, pain. Uh, we did that. Okay, sleep. Uh, Sleep, I love lavender, pedigrain, Roman chamomile. These will knock you out pretty <laughs> fast. <laughs> okay. Now, for now, I, I put it in my diffuser, lavender, but I could also ingest it, and that will still help me with my sleep? As long as it's a pure therapeutic right. grade sure. and not a synthetically derived. Okay. That's correct. That's correct. Right. All right. right. Well, speaking of lavender, I have my own personal experience going back east uh, during allergy season. Lavender is good for allergies. Oh. One drop under my tongue and my niece's tongue, and we were good. Oh, Seriously. Okay. Yeah. And there are several that will do that, such as lavender, peppermint, and lemon, the three that I'm willing to oh. give away if you have some callers. Mm -hmm. One drop or two drops under the tongue of each of these is a natural antihistamine. So it can That's work it. wonderful on seasonal disorders. Fantastic. Wow. And then I have this here, the exotic oils, oils that, like, we don't hear about, like uh, vetiver, cardamom, melaleuca. What's melaleuca, right? <laughs> I didn't even know that was an oil. Yeah, right, <laughs> patchouli. And then the caller mentioned uh, lang lang, vanilla oil. Yeah. Mentioned, well, let me yeah. just share with you that vetiver, for example, is another one of those relaxants like yeah. lavender and pedigree and Roman chamomile. It is grown in Haiti. It's a tall, thick grass, and yeah. they, the roots, they dig the roots out, and they distill the roots in order to get the oil, and this helps with things like anxiety, uh, depression, insomnia, muscular uh, problems, nervousness, oily skin, sprains, things like that. Vetiver is just fantastic at arresting tension. Mm. Really good. Go at back that, and listen to this episode. Tension. Evaporate. Okay. <laughs> Postpartum tension. Okay. Things wow. like that. Okay. Wow. What about cardamom? I love cardamom. Cardamom is is grown in Guatemala. It's a seed, and it has been sold for thousands of years to the Middle Eastern families, uh, and and it has just been a commodity uh, traded from South America to the Middle East forever. Wonderful, wonderful oil and used as a spice, but it has all kinds of other benefits that medicinal. people love about that oil. Mm. And let's go Melaleuca. It's known by another mm. name that people don't really equate to it, and that is? Yes. Hmm. 
tea tree oil. There we go. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> That's tea tree. <laughs> Get out. Tea tree, tea tree oil is uh, harvested in New Zealand and Australia mainly because that's where it grows really good. And this is the oil that's antifungal, and it's yeah. wonderful if Great you have any kind of problems in a daycare with roundworm or pinworm or mm. any of the any of the parasitic. Okay. It's fabulous for that, including in your mouth. Wow. Okay. What's what's Under one what's one more oil like that. that you can ask them about? Let's go with patchouli, the seventies oil. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> you yes. want to talk about the have hippie right smell, now. huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this patchouli is one of those wonderful flowers. It's a little pink flower that grows oh. on a little shrub and. It's just excellent for lots of good reasons, but but b- the biggest reason that people like it for is it it's it's matched all kinds of like if you have I love it's wonderful for deodorant and things like that. I love it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank we you, just got to talk about some exotic oils. This is so good. We've you been know talk- why I don't like patchouli? Talk- I got we- pulled over one. Time whoa, 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 whoa! Hold, hold on that. Hold on that story, Al. <laughs> We got to go to our vitamin magic segment. We're going to be back. <laughs> but right. pulled them this over. is Michael, and welcome back to another vitamin magic carpet ride. I know I left off in the middle last week. I think I ran out of time. I have too much to say, which I guess you already understand that and get to know that. But also, a lack of B12 may lead to osteoporosis, as well, obviously, uh, a lack of calcium. One of the things about osteoporosis, and I think I covered this in the panathenic acid, one of the roles of panathenic acid is that it becomes betaine hydrochloride. And betaine hydrochloride is essential for carrying calcium ions back in to the bone matrix. It's like the truck that carries all the stuff to the building site. Here are some of the things that create a deficiency of B12 and how you know that you're dealing with it. If you have general weakness, if you're tired all the time, a poor appetite. In fact, for kids that don't eat well, sometimes adding in a little B12 to the diet in a supplement form will stimulate their appetite. Speaking difficulties are also another sign of a deficiency. As well, and I talked about anemia earlier, Nervousness, nervousness is another side sign, as well as brain damage, which I may be suffering from right now. Uh, in the beginning stages of pregnancy, you also need it because it'll help prevent neurotube defects. And neurotube is really interesting because it's a hollow thing that that where the brain stem and um, spinal cord are kind of developed. And so there's why if there's damage there, we'll end up with problems, especially spina bifida. Anyway, uh, we'll cover more the next time we get together. Thanks, Michael, for that great information about vitamins. Now, today, our very special guest has been Al Garcia, and we've been talking about the medicinal and therapeutic health benefits of essential oils. Hey, Al, do you have any closing comments or advice for our listeners in 60 seconds? Well, I just want to urge them to call in, and if they don't have time to call in, maybe they could just uh, email me or go to my website and do the contact there, and I'll send them that book. That's fantastic. Also, just I just want you to urge all of you to learn about essential oils and to understand that today we have a problem with the fact that so many products are made with carcinogenic mm. uh, preservatives and additives and colors. And so find companies that are using essential oils uh, and not uh, chemicals, and you'll be a happier person. I love it. I love it, Al. We're sending them to you. Al says that if you currently have uh, any health challenges or like to have uh, something briefly explained in, in an email, he'd be willing to send you a free sample to demonstrate the benefits of essential oils. His email is algurugarcia at yahoo.com. You can also go to his website at algurugarcia.com or essentialoils.me. My name is Kenyatta Turner. I've been your host. I've been here with my amazing co-host, Stephanie Stanley, with Pharmacists for Humanity. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you. Wonderful show. My topic. (laughs) Yeah, thank you so much. And Al, thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you, Al, so much. Yes. Hey, guests, next week, tune in. Our topic's going to be is CBD good for your health? Our very special guest is going to be V Braxton. She's the owner of Migro here in the Phoenix area. If you missed any part of the show today, or if you just want to listen in again, all shows can be heard on demand anytime. You can go to our website, which is healthygrocerradio.com. 
You can also listen at moneyradio1510.com. And you can also watch us because we've been live on Facebook. Wave at the camera, Tony. Hey, <laughs> we've been live on, <laughs> on Facebook.com, the Healthy Grocer Radio Show, and you can click the link to watch this week's live show. Absolutely. Today we've been talking about essential oils. You've been listening to the Healthy Grocer Radio Show on Money Radio 1510. So until next Saturday at 11, thanks for listening to the Healthy Grocer Radio Show. Remember that health is your greatest wealth. wealth. Yeah, we've got all kinds of great topics. We have a great time here. I'm excited to be a part of this show. Excited that you have, you're have you here with me, Stephanie. Yes, and the listeners, of course, we love you too. See you next time. Visit AwakeningMusicBooks.com for avant-garde artists, eclectic world music, consciousness raising radio and blogs, self-help healing and wellness services. That's AwakeningMusicBooks.com.